Hello. Okay, it's been a little while, and I apologize for that. But I've been I've been very busy starting a new business. I've been doing a master's degree. I've had reports recently, lots of reading, lots of statistics, all this kind of thing. Got that out of the way for now. It's Christmas time. Got a little bit more time. Want to get back to doing some videos. Got plenty of new information, things you won't have heard me say before. And also, what I'm doing today, maybe a different take on similar issues. Um, in that, you know, the information that I, I read and then I experience, my views on things will, you know, will change slightly as time goes on. And, of course, if we don't ever change our mind, we never learn anything. So, what I'm going to talk about is how distanced we are becoming from the way our genetics are set up. Okay, so obviously, first thing you might think is, well, we're just talking about this paleo stuff again. We've heard that before. To be honest with you, I'm bored of it as well, right? I mean, you know, a year or two ago, I was re reading a lot about paleo style uh, lifestyles, and it's it's got a lot of pub publicity. It's got it's got its benefits, but of course, it's like all systems, it's got its limitations as well. But something that we can all apply. So this is this is just this is about all of us being happier being healthier, maybe living a bit longer. Most importantly, because ultimately we're all we're all gonna die at some point. But between now and then, having the best quality of life possible. That's what it's about. So not suffering from cancers, not being overweight, not being disabled, staying mentally healthy. How can we do this? So if we look, if we delve into the literature of which there is endless reams about this kind of thing because obviously it's really important stuff and we look at what are the main things the main risk factors for cardiovascular disease and cancer now those two things we're looking at about about 75 percent of us about three out of four of us thereabouts at the moment are likely to die of one of those two things now to limit your risk what are the main things all right what are they being physically inactive being overweight, not eating your fruits and vegetables. They're the main ones. Now we can argue till the cows come home about what type of physical activity to do. Sprinting, running, swimming, lifting weights, playing football, playing ping pong, whatever you like to do. You know, what should you eat? Should you eat low carb? Should you eat low fat? And but ultimately there's some general rules that whilst you will find conflicting views in the media, in the health and fitness industry, and even from your doctor, it's a few things that I think most of these people, certainly if they're at least a little bit educated, are going to agree on. Now, firstly, let's start with a physical activity. Walk. There's something even I've been trying to do recently a little bit more. It's cars are bad for you. <laughs> but, you know... If we can walk, I mean, they say about 10,000 steps a day. If, if, we, if you can walk sort of up to five five miles plus a day, you know, that includes walking around at work as well. I would say to you that you know, it's covering at a reasonable pace, you know, not dawdling. Then that's, you know, that will cover your cardiovascular fitness to a reasonable level. It's not going to make you a marathon runner. It's not going to make you Lance Armstrong. But it'll cover you for your health, I would say. I always advise lifting weights, especially it's good for bone density, it's good for insulin resistance, in other words, improving that. Uh, lots of things, especially as you age. Just lifting, lift, lifting some heavy things and do some walking. But most importantly, do, you know, do what you enjoy. Do what you enjoy and what you can make a habit. Now, as far as food goes, the biggest thing is to avoid the highly processed foods. Whether we're talking carbs, fat, whatever. The thing is, sugars, white flour, not good. Empty, they're devoid of nutrients. You're eating food that is not providing your body with anything that it needs, but it is giving you a quick burst of energy. It's certainly going to enhance your risk of things like type 2 diabetes, and it would appear obesity and heart disease. But then also, you know, Hydrogenated fats in margarine um, and processed meats. I think, you know, but your bacon, sausages, burgers, these things have been... All of this, we can use this sort of 80-20, 90-10 rule. 
where effectively, if you eat, if you eat just 80% of your diet from whole, in other words, things with one ingredient, foods, you're not, you're really not going to go too far wrong. You're not at all. Now add on to that the other one, the one that seems protective of of, of most cancers is it seems to be fruit and vegetable intake. Not not a crazy thought because they're full of the, the micronutrients that are needed for your health. And so if you're getting your five plus a day, you're eating eighty percent whole foods, and you're moving, then you're you you're pretty much doing all you can to a reasonable extent to reduce your risk of these debilitating uh, and life-threatening diseases, all right? And so if you take anything from this, never mind the squabbling about what's perfect, eat at least five a day, walk at least five miles a day, don't eat processed foods more than about 10 to 20% of your diet, and enjoy life. And I will see you again soon.